Well, hey, Man Cave, this is Bob for the Bob Zenskill Man Cave, and today we are at Train Fest. The show opens in 30 minutes, and as you can see, all the vendors are getting set up right for, for the show, and all the railroaders over here are getting their trains on the layouts to show what they have just for you today and this weekend. So let's take a look at what has changed with Train Fest and how people feel about finally getting back to a Train Fest show after three years. Let's go take a look. Okay, the first things you'll probably notice is it is a pretty big room. Uh, the convention center here over at the Wisconsin State Fair in Milwaukee, Wisconsin is a large, large place. So, what has changed this year that stands out for me is that you have all the train modules and all the layouts over on one side of the building just the way they arranged it. Also, this back wall over here, as you can see, is closed off. There's a whole nother section over there on that other side that is not being used. That's a $40,000 rental for that space, but if you don't have the vendors here, you can't fill that space. So those of you who uh, would have come to Train Fest and shown off your products and so forth to the public, uh, you missed out on some space. And the layouts could have gone over there too as well, had more layouts decided to show up. But everything seems a little bit toned down on some of the booze. They're not as grandiose as they have been. Some are. Uh, some decided just to bring tables and put their stuff out instead of having the, the standard convention kind of booth. But we do have the standard um, Vendors like Spring Creek is here, Teskey's Trains here, Summerfield's Trains, and you got some artists and those kind of things and a lot of layouts. Half this room is full of layouts and it should be very interesting to try and get around to each and every one of them and show what they have. I've been seeing a lot of people having some very good modeling skills and it seems like a little internal competition with some of them to see who's got the best module in their club. So, let's go looking at more stuff. Well, Train Fest is officially started, and the crowds are, well, let's just say lacking. It's either because of the cold weather or, or something else. Other people coming over on, on this, these doors over here, so, maybe it's just multiple entrances here. Picked the wrong entrance, I don't know. Okay, we're here with Matt Gentry from Rapido Trains. I did promise to show up here first and talk about N-Scale. Maybe I threatened you, you, you did kind of threaten me. So, what do we got here in N-Scale? Well, we have a lot of new first samples, um, including our first samples of the NSC 73 foot center beam. Multiple variations, you can see we've got different top trusses and different deck configurations. Uh, smooth and closed top truss, or uh, the deck with the risers and then the open for the really early uh, NSC center beams. Okay. And then uh, different combination of parts and end cages and floors and such can get uh, a bulk of the the variations on the NSC car. Okay. Then we have our first samples of our Santa Fe RR56 reefer in N scale. Um, pretty straightforward. It's uh, basically the HO car is scaled down. Um, right. We have included two roof hatches with this. So one in the open configuration, and then this just pops off, and then there's one that can be in the closed configuration for oh, whichever okay. the modeler prefers. Yeah. Yep. And then we have. Um, our first sample of the uh, Procore built 5820 cubic foot plastic pellet hopper. And then again, this is just a scaled down version of the HO car. And then we're also doing the uh, special demonstrator uh, solid blue color body car for Spring Creek, like they did the HO car. Oh, yeah. So yeah. Uh, it's an exclusive to Spring Creek. They'll have to get it through them. Good thing that they're here too to come see it or give yes, them opinions. Yes, absolutely. Get get, uh, get your pre-orders. They can get it there. Yeah. Booth, so. Okay. And then this is our brand new sample, uh, new for this weekend even, is the uh, InScale barrel ore cars. 
Uh, they were wildly successful in HO, right. and of course all the inscalers were, hey, let's do it Yeah, in where's mine? Where's so mine? Yep. Here we have it. Um, cool. Both the uh, short version and the long version, and then uh, mm -hmm. the paint schemes will mirror the, the HO release that okay. we did. Okay, cool. Um, we have our production samples of the uh, uh, Auto Flood 3. Uh, okay. Those are in North America. They should be arriving at the warehouse in uh, Markham in the next couple of weeks and should be shipping out late November, early December. Oh, cool. And then uh, the last in-scale new sample we have is the uh, FlexiFlow, um, the uh, uh, New York Central uh, prototype car. Um, Pre-orders are still open on those, and those should be closing here shortly. Uh, so get your orders in. Cool. And so... Uh What's it like to uh, be back finally at Train Fest this year? You know, I've been talking to a couple of different uh, vendors and friends at mm -hmm. the show, and it's just hard to believe it's been three years, you know, getting yeah. back into the ropes of things and figuring it out, but it, it's coming back quick. So It's kind of emotional to come back and, you yeah. know, going, what's it going to be like? And yeah. it's, uh, it's a little bit smaller than it used to be, but... Maybe next year it's going to be a little bit bigger. Yeah, hopefully, you know, everybody gets back in the swing of things. They yep. all want to come back to Milwaukee. Okay. Well, thanks, Matt, and we'll uh, look forward to getting some of these products out to everybody. And I may just pick up a couple of these. Sounds good. Thanks, thanks. for stopping by, Bob. Yep. We are here with Shane Wilson of Scale Trains, and we're going to be talking about these new coil cars that have just come out in the recent year. So, Shane, what is the new announcement for coil cars. So this is kind of interesting. This is the first freight car that we've done that uh, is uh, being announced in N-Scale and is not in our HO line. So this is the uh, Thrall 48-foot two-hood coil car. It's a natural extension of the 42-foot car that we announced earlier this year. Same family, uh, just a little bit bigger. So the single hood car, of course, has the really long hood. The two-hood car, uh, it's going to be 48 foot, and one of the cool things if we look up close here in the photo, you'll notice the uh, the what appears to be the wood decking, yeah. and it's actually plastic. But the factories figured out a really cool way to weather it to give it a very realistic look. Of course, you've got edge metal platforms all the way around, all the underframe detail. Bob holds it there. Okay. I'll flip it over. Yeah. You can see all the brake rigging, the plumbing, and uh, of course metal wheels and body mounted couplers. And then a couple things to note too, the coils are actually the weight of the car. So these are die cast coils. Ooh, cool. And, uh, and you'll put that in the car and that's what's gonna weight it down. Coils, of course, are stackable. And, or, I'm sorry, the hoods are. Hoods are. And okay. uh, look for delivery of these uh, in the summer. And of course, the shorter car, they'll be here uh, in probably the first quarter of 23. First quarter of 23, I already have the first series on pre-order and I'm looking to pre-order the the split hoods I guess they're split hoods two hoods is what we call oh, it yeah. okay two hoods okay so I'm going to get some of those two as well awesome and uh, we'll add to my repertoire of rolling stock well for your in-scale fans too a couple things while we're here yep. and you can uh, grab some b-roll we've uh, shown the first samples of the in-scale dash nines for the next run okay we're going to see delivery of those uh, probably early spring and then uh, the ET44s are in production now. They're almost done. Look for those to uh, uh, be here in uh, early to mid-December, so just in time for Christmas. So oh, cool. a lot of good in-scale stuff. And also, too, we're showing all the samples, finally, of the 40-2s uh, in the end. So you've got... Uh, oh, yeah, these, too. got the BNs. Of course, we've shown SpongeBob before. Uh, Admiral Cab, this is the first time we've shown it. Uh, Chessie. And, of course... Uh, the southern high hood units southern. as well okay yeah i got some of those on pre-order too I, I got like four different pre-orders so it's a lot of end scale coming this year a lot of end scale and a lot more behind it too so our okay. end scale offerings are going to grow pretty dramatically uh, yeah i think i also have some fox valley stuff that's coming out as well yeah, on pre-order we'll in, in 23 as well so yeah hey, merry christmas to me <laughs> <laughs> well thanks shane well, thank uh, you That'll, uh, till the next show, I guess. Sounds good. Uh, probably N-Scale Convention in uh, Reno. We'll be in Reno. We'll be in Reno. Okay. Should have a new locomotive announcement for Reno. Oh, we'll be looking forward to that, too. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Okay, we have Michael Gross in the house. Pretty cool. Uh, 
Okay, we have a model train show and everything else, but why do we have universal windows and trains all mixed in together? Kind of strange. For those of you who uh, understand the big yellow legal pad, with microtrains, there it is, in operation. Okay, we are at the microtrains booth, and they have some new items out here coming out, some more graffiti kind of items, or weathered cars. We have the 60-foot box cars. We got an all-new cushioned under frame for the extended coupler for 50-foot box cars. That's a little interesting. More things that are coming out. Pullman Standard Milestone cars. Uh, Multi-pack series and releases. Uh, looks like the Golden West and some Canadian Pacific 60-foot high cube box cars. Uh, the Wabash Cannonball Heavyweight 5-pack. And it looks like they're coming out with a 65-foot 70-ton mill gondola with some extra details. That's coming next year. Uh, the BNSF family tree is out in stores now. We've got that series is uh, coming along just fine. Eight car series, and we're coming up with the 50 years of N scale cars, the Bedford Talent and Lake Creek set, along with this 50 foot, uh, well, 50 foot, 50 years of model railroading high cube box car that's coming out. That's probably coming out in the next few weeks, and then you have the Micromatic. Coupler system, as you can probably get those replacements for your rolling stock from other manufacturers that you don't like theirs, but you like microtrains. So you also get coming up a 160th anniversary from Union Pacific. That's coming mid next month, mid December. And so, and there's we have that 50, 50th anniversary car right there if you want to see it right now. More stuff here, more stuff there. And of course we got November releases. The Railroad Magazine series. Uh, there, there's the car that I'm looking for but can't find yet because they don't have them here at the show. And maybe get some of these as well for Christmas. Get a Z-Scale as well. And of course the Military Valor cars are out now. I had uh, Medal of Honor once before, but now these are the Service Cross Bronze Star cars for all the Veterans Day aficionados like myself. We're at Tangent Models, mostly HO scale items like these cabooses, which are a uh, whatever DSIL SLCC Bay window caboose system. That's uh, Kind of neat. Some with cupolas, some without. We also have uh, the the wide vision caboose system. Illinois Central is in this one, and you got a, a few other ones as well. Um, so wide variety of cabooses, and of course you got some. Other stuff like these triple coal car hoppers. Yeah. Various versions from uh, you know Sioux Line 1972 through today. The standard Pullmans. And you got these 50-foot box cars, high cube, and some coil steel gondolas. And you also have some double plug box cars, you know, the 86 foot high cube quad plug doors. These are monsters. Monsters, they look like auto racks, but they're not. You got some smaller normal size box cars there, 40 footers, some uh, gondolas. And of course you have some accessories like wheel sets to uh, replace your locomotive rolling stock or just plain rolling stock. 
Okay. So we're at the Soundtracks booth, and they have this thing called Blue Nami. Cool. It's basically uh, Bluetooth controlled trains, and you can put this on your uh, iPad or or tablet of some sort to run your dead rail trains. Like uh, this particular Lego train is just running or can run without it. So it's pretty neat. Or you can run your actually powered trains as well. So And it can all run off of your phone or your tablet. It's pretty neat. And with sound. Put sound in your Lego. Okay, now you're running that orange one. So you want to go faster, you turn this up. And you change directions, you push this button. And then you want to blow the horn, push that. There you go, have fun. Why do you need to forward? No, it's going backwards. Hit reverse. Then you go forward. Nope. Look, look. reverse. See, look. See your REV. The reverse. Go up and push it up. And trains are moving. You see it's going faster. You make it go faster? Hit it again. That's the bell. Horn's the one right here. Oh. Is that pretty neat? We have a BLI big boy that's coming in with smoke, coming real soon. I have that one on pre order, 4023. Hard we got some rolling thunder sound, as you can hear that. And we have UP. We have some uh, coal cars, box cars, some electric engine type things here, some prototype uh, models here for DLI. Some other end scale versions that they have as well. And that's the business end of the smoke unit. Eventually, when we get smoke to come out of this, that'd be cool. And this is how you uh, fill that with smoke. You need a little uh, syringe to get it in there. There we go. We finally have smoke in N scale big boys. That is in production right now. It's just just wrapping up production. They'll probably be in in stores in uh, December. Okay. Okay. Coming out from Cato early next year, 2023. Could be well early next year. Could be uh, before June. So we have the big boy. It's kind of under glass. Kind of hard to see everything. All those reflections, you really can't see anything in there. Maybe I'll get them to take that off. But anyway. Uh, ALC 140, or ALC 140, uh, 140, ALC 42 coming out. I do like, you know, people did mention this clear track for that display track. It's kind of kind of interesting. There's no color in it, but that's cool. And you got your... Uh, E9 sets and all the other sets you got a 844 44 or 8444 
excursion set. And the Greyhound scheme and then Milwaukee Road, all those things that have come out in the past couple years. Uh, of course the Cato Silver Street Zephyr set. And all these uh, superliners. And P45 42s. Where we're going to get a little bit clearer view without the plastic on top of there of this big boy. It looks like they still need some more uh, work on the parts. I don't think they have a silver smoke box on an actual big boy, but that's got to turn black at some point. So slowly but surely it'll get done. Uh, that'd be kind of cool. Okay, new from Kato in HO scale is this extending track. And it just slides back and forth and extends back how you want it. The other thing I like is you don't need the insulation. As you can see, it just that's how it works. Well, I can't do it one-handed, but anyway. It slides back right here, and it looks good. We were at the Atlas booth. And they have some uh, HO, of course, they got a lot of HO, locomotives and boxcars. Even have some N scale GP40 2s, CN, CP, Pan Am Railways. Also have some covered hoppers. Also have some uh, covered hoppers from Trinity, the PD 5000s, and RBL boxcars. Okay, when I was a kid, this would have been awesome to have underneath the tree or in my room. A glow-in-the-dark passenger train set with glow-in-the-dark track. What more could a kid want? Magic re-railer. Just put in light. If you turn all the lights off, you can find the Atlas booth, that's for sure. Then you can get the original passenger train set without the glow-in-the-dark. Pretty cool. We were at the Spring Creek Model Trains booth. And it looks pretty busy in here today. Got some uh, 3D print uh, things here, along with lots and lots of people. Also have Dwarven lighting without wiring. It's mostly LED lighting with uh, fiber wire. Fiber lines. All you gotta do is touch that and the switch switches. You can put it on any kind of display and it will switch the switches. Using the touch toggle matrix. Pretty cool. We have the Tutwiler Fine Art at tutwilerfineart.com Hand-painted artwork by the artists over here. Got a Star Wars themed train related painting there.
there's there's Michelle. I didn't recognize her at first. <laughs> okay, we are here at the Intermountain booth. Looks like we have an interesting little uh, end scale locomotive here. All the lights and flashing and everything else. Decoder and so forth. I'm not sure what kind of locomotive that is going to be, but it looks kind of interesting. Looks like sort of a European kind of uh, light scheme there. I'll have to ask them later. We got new tooling on tri-level auto racks. And HO tier 4 locomotives. 4750, three bay covered hoppers. And stock items and HO and so forth. 